It is our pleasure now to welcome in for the second time ever in the history of this show, former BYU linebacker standout and great. He was a legend in the Cotton Bowl, so many games, Shea Muirbrook. Shea, welcome back yeah. to BYU Sports Nation. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm honored and, and happy to be a part of it. BYU is a member of the Big 12. I know they're not going to fully integrate until 2023, but I can't help but look back on what you and that 1996 team did against Big 12 competition, opening up the season with the win against Texas A&M and then closing it out with a big victory over Kansas State. So in a weird way, Shay, maybe you deserve credit for getting BYU into the Big 12, right? Uh, yeah, me and the 96 team, I, we'll take that credit. Uh, I think that uh, – and obviously, we felt right at home in the Cotton Bowl. So uh, I know that's uh, that's one of the Big Twelve um, <laughs> bowl games that they they attend. So it, no, it was. I, I mean, whether the foundation was laid or it was already there, and we were just holding up the uh, the standard that was set for us. I, I feel like uh, BYU in the Big Twelve is is a big deal, and uh, kind of the mantra of that season was just gaining the respect that we felt we deserved, and and I think that just kind of they continued to work and that's why they're in the big 12 now. Yeah. It, it was a validating moment. The respect BYU's had and finally can quantify as being in a power five, which is pretty cool. And then Saturday, obviously playing Utah and ending the streak, the juice in the stadium was incredible. Shay, it reminded me of 96 Texas A&M. It reminded me of the 97 cotton bowl. Those were some special moments. So what did it mean for you as a former player to watch? Hey, BYU gets into the big 12 and beats Utah on back to back days. Well, you can't see it, but my hair is standing on end. I have goosebumps <laughs> just as we talk about it. Um, clearly, you know, my boys are involved in, in youth football and high school football. They understand. And uh, so we played football all day and then came home for the game. And I was kind of letting them know, like, hey, Utah is like, you know, uh, we don't like them. <laughs> and uh we're gonna win and uh so we watched the game here and obviously um i think it's funny because i'm kind of an animated personality but uh even here in my home uh my wife's kind of like hey like calm down and i'm like no like you know i, I was getting fired up jumping around yelling at the tv and <laughs> and uh so yeah there's a there's a lot of emotion uh connected to that game uh i can only imagine what it was like in the stadium i'm sure that place was rocking uh, I did see a promo um, where they did kind of a, a flashback and a montage to the uh, to the '96 team against A&M. And just when I when I was watching that, uh, to place it is really hard because I know people talk about it, but as you watch the game and you hear uh, Brent Musburger and uh, I forget who else was with him, but you could. You could feel and you could sense the emotion in that stadium as every play went off in the battle. And I mean, and it was just electric. And I don't think people fully grasp that concept when you talk about um, Lavelle Edwards Stadium. I mean, when that's a full house, and I mean, it's it's a it's a great venue and one of the one of the best in the country to to play a football game. Former BYU linebacker standout Shane Muirbrook is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Hard to believe this is the 25th year anniversary of that outstanding 1996 BYU football team that, of course, won the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day of 97. When you look back on that team, I think 25 years, what emotions come to mind, Shay? Um, obviously, I mean, I'm, I'm flooded with a lot. Uh, those were my brothers. I, I think... Probably the biggest thing I think about and the, and the takeaway from that team is um, you give us Washington on a neutral field, and I, I put money, I put my house on, we win that game. <laughs> um, I think that's the only thing, um, that was the only kind of Nick in that season. Uh, we were a stacked and loaded team across the board. There wasn't a weak link as far as players, special teams. I mean, we had, we were, we were stacked and uh, obviously, you know, we're going to make the case that, you know, we feel like we were the best team that ever came out of BYU. And, uh, and that's no disrespect to obviously the national championship team or, or anyone else. Uh, but we were, we were a good solid team. And I, and I, I think the thing that, um, 
needs to be stated about the 96 team is that team had grit. I mean, there was a lot of moxie and there's, there was a lot of people that, that played intense. Uh, we were not any pushover or, I mean, we could play physical, we could play finesse, we could do you up. I mean, that, there, we went down to Texas, we played, uh, you know, I mean, obviously <laughs> A&M, you know, I remember them coming up and we were up there at Sundance. We did some little thing pregame and just to see them kind of sizing us up and not giving us the respect we deserved. And it was just like, yeah, I can't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> and then, uh, and then to look across the line in fourth quarter and see him gassed out and just know that we got you, we're going to win this game. Um, and, and like I said, so that, that was kind of the character and the resolve of that 96 team. And um, again, it's no slide on anyone else, but that was a, a unique um, chemistry uh, that we had. And obviously the coaches, Lavelle, it was just, uh, it was extremely storied and um, nostalgic. I, I can't say enough about my teammates and how hard we worked that summer uh, preparing for that season. We've talked to members of that team and we've talked to you even five years ago about it, but it feels like after 95, when this, I think it's an 18 year bowl streak ends or something, you guys are the team that ends the bowl streak. You guys go into the off season with this resolve like you talked about. And then it's not like you had a cupcake schedule. You're all of a sudden playing Texas A&M like before the students are even on campus. You end up playing a Wyoming team that wins 10 games and doesn't even go to a bowl game. You go to, uh, you know, in the modern New Year's Six, just the second uh, New Year's Six game, if you will, although at the time it was different, Alliance Bowl, you weren't in, blah, blah, blah. You guys played this tough schedule, and you played 15 games. It was Ohio State a couple years ago, the first team to finally touch what you guys did. So when, when did this team come together? How And when did you know, hey, we're actually pretty good here? Well, I, I think – um, I think us underclassmen of the 95 team knew what we had, uh, but it was kind of one of those things where we didn't necessarily want to take ownership of it because, you know, I mean, it wasn't, um, going the way we, we wanted it. And so at that point, and obviously after losing to Utah, uh, our junior year, and then, like you said, uh, not making bowls and just, it was just kind of, um, it was a loose, it was a loose outfit, uh, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, we were not dialed in and as tight as we could be. Uh, we let a few games uh, slip out of our hands and there was a lot of team members that obviously wanted to go on and, and continue playing football. And a lot of us knew that we really needed to get uh, some national spotlight on the team in, in order to, you know, in, enhance our opportunities and uh, to move on. Uh, but more importantly, it was the resolve of the team that we, we felt like we were one of the best teams in the country. And it, and it wasn't just a, it wasn't just a saying, it wasn't just like, Hey, you know, no, we really, really felt like, anyone anywhere anytime let's do it and uh like i said with the exception of washington which anyone who's ever played on that field huh. knows that there's a uh, it's like playing on ice i mean if you don't have the right gear for that field uh it's a hundred percent a a uh, home field advantage and clearly you know we spotted them 14 points out the gate but it um i think between myself, Sartesian, Chad Lewis, and uh, Tim McTire, it, it was kind of the the perfect blend, you know what I mean, of the the four captains that really was able to sew and and bring everything together under Lavelle. I mean, it was it was the best of you know the four corners. I mean, it just it really solidified the team as far as. Um, kind of us being the ambassadors to um, each one of the, you know, the diversities of the team. Uh, we all came from different backgrounds, and but we, we definitely all had a chip on our shoulder and, and had something to prove. 
The 96 team is going to be honored tomorrow during the BYU-Arizona State game. Eighth-ranked matchup of teams ever in the history of Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Hard to believe it's that few, but it's a very rare circumstance. Your former teammate Tim McTire, after BYU's first two wins this season, said, this kind of reminds me of the 96 team. Got big bowl game aspirations. There's just this belief that they're going to win every game that they play. So, Shay, are you in agreement with your former teammate Tim that there are some similarities about this year's team after a 2-0 start, or is it too early to tell? No, I, I would say I would agree with Tim on that point. What I see um, from this team is I do see a resolve, and I see a resilience, uh, a toughness that, hey, we're, I mean, they have a lot of pieces. They got a lot of talent across the board. There's That's no secret. Um, but what I see um, is – and it's it's funny because I help with, you know, football. I'm coaching, and and you try to instill that in your players, but you have to have that ability to win games. Uh, games are going to be close, and there's certain things you do in the course of those games that ultimately decide the outcome of it. And when I look at this team, it's very polished. There's they don't make mistakes. They don't hurt themselves uh they don't turn the ball over they don't uh jump off sides they don't do things that ultimately kill drives and momentum and hand the uh hand the game over to the other team so on in that regard i i believe uh 100 in, in tim's statement and i think that um absolutely why why can't byu run the table why i mean i don't see any reason i don't see anyone out there that's just overwhelming uh there's not a, a talent disparity and um obviously we're we're playing at home they yeah uh 100 this team can run the board I, I will say there is that pitfall that we fell into in 96 with washington is you're riding high you're coming off some emotional i know this utah game is was a huge huge emotional win for byu and and now i would just caution the team that that's that will be a pitfall, um, and it's going to be hard to get as high as you were last week uh, for your rival uh, this week. Um, but great teams find a way to do that, and and I think that um, the coaching and um, you know Kalani has, uh, and in that regard, um, you know he I when he ran down the sidelines and caught that pass. I mean, that was, that's just something that gets guys jacked. Like when you play for a coach like that, it's like, let's go, like, let's do it. Like, and, and so in that regard, I, I feel like um, they have a great chance to, to run the table. Uh, uh, emotion is huge in football and you, you cannot play and succeed in this game if you don't have emotion. Yeah, and it's worth noting that uh, your teammate Tim McTire also said BYU has a coach that they love, so it's a valid point you bring up. They were juiced about that. Shay, we're juiced to always talk with you, a man who uh, we're pretty sure is going to hold the most sacks in a game record for the rest of history with seven. It's great to talk to you, my friend. Thanks so much. It's an honor to have you, or excuse me, to be on your show, and, and uh, anytime I can help out or comment on BYU and how great they are. I'm happy to do it. I'd love to hear it. Thanks, Shay. All right. We'll see you guys. Thank you. Shay Muirbrook with us on BYU Sports Nation.